considering uh, the fear and the anxiety of the unknown and what that brings to me personally and what it can bring to us uh, when we look at it just with our natural carnal mind and uh, with our flesh, just this fear of the unknown. And um, just a bit of a story, um, Jem and I got married um, in Geelong and we, uh, we honeymooned uh, up in Queensland and we had this opportunity to go uh, s s snorkeling in uh, the Great Barrier Reef. And um, I was like pretty excited but all I knew from the Great Barrier Reef was uh, the documentaries of David Attenborough. And when they would show the Great Barrier Reef, they would show a nice little island, and then they would just pan down into the ocean to the reef. And um, I actually have a fear of deep water. Don't like it. Uh, and uh, so we get on this boat, and I'm like, all right, this, this is exciting. This is cool, can't wait. And we just start going out into the middle of the ocean about an hour and a half, just going. And then the uh, captain of the ship just says, all right, we're here. And I get out to the, where we, we go into the water and I'm just looking around and I don't see any island. <laughs> I don't see any form of land as far as the eye can see. And I just see these waves. They're not crashing, but the water's just like this, going up and down. And they're like, all right, get on your gear, go in the water. Uh, there's fish down there. I'm just looking, and I'm just, oh, just take a deep breath. I was really, really nervous and pretty terrified because I thought there was going to be nice shallow waters and nice little tropical uh, island nearby. But no, it was in the middle of the ocean. And uh, so I just brave it. I go in. It's not too bad. Um, and I'm just looking down. And it's like maybe about just three meters deep. And there's a reef. And there's all these beautiful fish. And I'm like, OK, that's, this isn't bad. I can deal with this. This is all good. I have Gemma nearby. It's all good. <laughs> and um, I just look to my left, though, and all I see is just deep dark blue and i'm just like if i see some random silhouette of this giant fish i think i'm just gonna have a heart attack and die right here right now um but just just in saying that um my fear that i have with deep water is the fact that i have no idea what's underneath me or when i looked out into the deep ocean i had no idea what was there and my mind just starts going there could be a shark there could be some deep sea creature that we haven't heard of because we've only discovered five percent of the ocean <laughs> and so my mind just goes there starts building up this anxiety and the stress and it can be like that with our life with whatever we're going through if it's just what tomorrow brings we have no idea what tomorrow brings we can have an idea we can have a plan but these unknown factors can go into our lives and it can bring this fear and this anxiety and this this doubt and even pain where it can just can be completely crippling and you just can't do anything and there's people that can just stay inside and just i don't want to deal with anything because i don't want to have to deal with these unknown factors that life has to give and um that's what they have to deal with in the world this, this darkness, that's another fear that people have is, is darkness. And it's because you can't see what's going on around you. And ironically, with the fear of being alone in the dark is actually to not be alone in the dark because you don't know what's there. And if you're just sitting alone and you hear noises and your mind just starts playing all these things, again, creature, whatever, um, it can just build up that anxiety and that fear. And people in this world that aren't saved are walking in this unknown darkness. And uh, it's a sad, sad thing. And there's praise the Lord, though, that we have the answer. Praise the Lord that we've been brought into the light. 
But if we can start reading in Psalm 107 and just starting in verse 10. Such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron, because they rebelled against the words of God and condemned uh, contemned to the counsel of the Most High. Therefore he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down, and there was none to help. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their, their distresses. He brought them out of the darkness and the shadow of death and break their brands in sunder. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. And we've been brought out of this darkness where we felt like we were chained down. We didn't know what was going on. We had this fear, this un, uh, we were, have had these things that we weren't suspect, expecting going on in our lives. And it can just easily just bring this, this anxiety and this, this, this doubt and being nervous. I know for a fact that when we were first coming over here, um, I've made this trip. This is my sixth time coming over to Australia. Uh, Gemma has made uh, the commute down to Van up to Vancouver a few times. So we've done this trip quite a few times, um, but we've never done it with a 10 month old baby. And that brought a bit of fear and anxiety because we didn't know what to expect. And even now, going home, there's still this playing in my head. Well, we had an overnight flight and he slept for half of it. This time it's in the middle of the day. He's probably not going to be sleeping for most of it. And I can build up this anxiety, but I could easily just keep on working myself up in the flesh. But if I just look at putting on the mind of Christ and what the Lord has and the promises that he has, I don't have to deal with the the silliness of these these thoughts if we can turn to galatians 6. just one uh, verse here galatians 6 and verse 8 for he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting and that's the key to this, these, these unknown fears of this world, if we're gonna just play into our, our mind and let our mind run loose and just build up this fear, build up this fear of these unknown things that we could be afraid of, that we can just uh, get ourselves all anxious about, of course, it's actually even gonna probably be worse than what the actual unknown thing is because your mind is evil. Your mind does these things where it just makes things worse for you, but, if we just mind the things of the spirit, the fruits of the spirit, love, joy, peace, long suffering, all those, all those things. And we just know that we stand firm on the promise of God and with whatever the, the unknown thing that this world can bring upon us, we can look to the Lord and be like, you know what, Lord, I don't know what's going to happen, but you do. And that's where I stand firm on is that promise of the Lord where he knows and that's, I'm fine with that. And we should all be just fine with that, where whatever the outcome is, the Lord has his hand upon the situation. And if we can go to Psalm 27, just to finish. And that's what I just try to reassure myself and, and Gemma. If we're ever facing something in life where it could be a little bit scary, can make us a bit anxious, I don't know what's going to happen. The Lord does. And we just put our promises in the Lord. We put our life in the Lord's hands. And then he just takes care of it. And there's blessing. Psalm 27, just in verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? So... That's where our promise is. That's where our light is. We don't have to be worried and be caught up in this darkness of this world, the darkness of our mind anymore. We just follow the Lord. And as we're close to him, he's that light. He's that promise. He's our salvation. And all the people said, I'll hand things over to Pastor Rob.